Hey guys, today I want to talk a little bit about Brightwing. Specifically, we're going to continue the series of four mistakes you might be making. Brightwing is a hero that has been in and out of the meta, but recently has been in the meta for quite a while, for a few reasons. Um, but Brightwing does have quite a few mistakes that I commonly see. Specifically when I'm, um, when I'm coaching people and I'm watching a replay of Brightwing, I see a few mistakes much more often than, than others. And some of these mistakes are so simple, it kind of just makes me want to tear my hair out. But let's start off with one that's not so common, which is not double soaking. And people don't realize this. Most people like to use Brightwing because, oh, we've got the global. Brightwing can push in one lane and then join the team with the global. But in reality, Brightwing can actually double soak as early as level 7. Um, and by level 9, it's a tad bit more forgiving. And then by level 13, 14, it's a lot faster. So the way that it works is you will throw your Q and you want the middle ring of your Q to hit as many targets as possible. Generally, the backliners. Then you'll attack each minion three times. And then you'll throw one more Q, and that kills the minion wave. Now, we can finish off with just a couple extra auto attacks, leading up to 12 auto attacks. And then we do the same thing in this lane. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, we'll throw out a Q. Two, three. We can finish off with those last three. Use our mobility, and guess what? You can get back to this lane without much of an issue. So, double soaking is something that you should be doing if you have the capabilities of it and your team has some place that they could be getting value while you're double soaking. So, if you were someone who played Brightwing and you were abusing the global aspect by having your team fight like a 4v5, you could actually have been getting twice the value that you have been getting in the past now that you know that you can double soak. And that could significantly increase your win rate by giving your team a much larger experience lead than they had before. So that's the first mistake. It's, um, it's not a common one because most people don't know that Brightwing can double soak, but that is something that you can do. Now, I don't always recommend Brightwing to be used as a global. I actually don't really like Brightwing as a global. I just found that when I was moving up in the rank in Storm League on my kind of my healer only accounts, um, I had to cover lanes a lot for my team and I didn't really want to use my global all the time um, so I would double soak lanes and then I would just catch up to my team at the very last minute when we really needed me to be there and that gave us a two to three level lead in every game that I played because I was able to do that. The next mistake is kind of a silly one as well it only really matters on a couple objectives but I see most people stay with the same build all the time on Brightwing, and it's usually preference of what that build is, but I want to say that there's one talent in particular that I feel is not preference, um, and it's a little bit more objective when you should take it. So we'll take any talent, level 1 doesn't really matter. Level 4, you can go with anything that you want to. That is preference, unless you are on a map that dealing damage to someone can interrupt an objective. And this is an objective that they have to sit on, meaning that they have to channel it for a second. So this could be Towers of Doom, this could be anything. All of those channels are like Cursed Hollow, Towers of Doom, Plant Map, whatever. Um, all of those channels require a five second channel and Dream Shot increases the range of your Q by 50%. And if you hit someone with it, it makes the cooldown drop by two seconds, meaning this will be a four second cooldown and it'll have a longer range. Well, look at its range already, right? It, it's a pretty large range. When we get Dream Shot, look at this range. Look at how far you can be. We can throw a Q and we can interrupt from this far away. And guess what? If they're on the point, oh, it does reduce it to two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Um, if they're on the point, you can literally just sit back here and you can forever stall every time they try to channel that point. Even if they dodge, they only have a one second window for them to rechannel fast. So even if you throw this out and you miss, they have one second and now it's already too late because we just have to wait as they're channeling. We're going to throw out the second one. This talent alone on specific maps that you have to channel a point 
will significantly increase your win rate if you use it correctly, right? If you sit back, you interrupt a couple times, um, those couple times could be enough for your team to get there, and then your team's there, you can fight. And then maybe you get one or two free channels before the enemies get there to interrupt you. It allows you to kind of take a single talent and interrupt as much as someone like a Li Ming or a Junkrat could interrupt. Um, and so that's really good to not have to draft a Li Ming or a Junkrat when all you have to do is change a single talent. And the talents that you're giving up are not that good of talents anyways. So taking Dream Shot can be huge. Now for the last two mistakes, and these are the most common mistakes that I see on Brightwing. And these are ones that make me want to tear my hair out every time that I see them. But the first mistake is that people are not using Pixie Dust for movement speed. And so Pixie Dust is pretty straightforward, right? Gives you 20% movement speed, 30% spell power, or sorry, spell armor. If someone's about to take a lot of damage, you then throw the Pixie Dust out, they have the spell armor, they take less damage, they're more likely to survive. Even better, you throw Pixie Dust whenever your team takes a CC, because whenever someone gets stunned on your team, you know they're about to take a lot of spell damage. So, someone gets stunned on your team, you throw that out, they'll most likely survive the stun, you could even throw out a cleanse to guarantee that they get out. Now, that's the straightforward, easy way to use your E. But what I often see people lack is, if you noticed, I used my E so I could double soak. I gave myself the movement speed, and I used it so that I could get from lane to lane very quickly. I use my E so that I can back um, before an objective. Let's say an objective spawning in 15 seconds. And so I don't need to use my... My... Um, my Z to get back to lane. So I save my Z. And that way I still have my Z for the big heal. And so that's part of the reason why I like to use Pixie Dust for the, the movement speed. You saw I used Pixie Dust to get back to lane. I'm back at full mana because the first good chunk of traveling on Brightwing, you're gonna be regenning mana that whole time. So if you spend 60 mana, you're gonna be regenning a lot of it just as you're running back to lane. And so that's kind of where um that mistake comes from and finally i want to just add one more piece to this the amount of times i was coaching games and i saw people playing brightwing and as they had a tank like a garage or a diablo running towards the enemy and they didn't give him pixie dust you give that garage pixie dust he moves faster than the person that he's chasing he throws the person you polymorph them you guys lead to a kill and so I saw several kills missed in the games that I was watching where they just didn't give movement speed to their tanks at the right time. And they tend to use Pixie Dust a little bit more randomly. So I'm going to give you two rules. One, if your tank's trying to engage, give them Pixie Dust. Two, if you're trying to move around the map faster, Pixie Dust yourself. And three, if someone on your team gets hit by a CC, you Pixie Dust them. Those are the probably 80% of the uses of Pixie Dust. Feel free to use them when like a Pyroblast is about to hit someone or uh, if you see any other situation where it might be valuable. But about 80% of the times used Pixie Dust should be one of those three things. Now, for the last mistake, and this is my biggest frustration, is people using their Z for the teleport and not the heal. I can't tell you how many times I'll see people back and then teleport back to an objective um, before the objective is even spawned. Now when the objective spawns, you don't have your biggest heal. The one downside to Brightwing, I guess there's a few downsides, of course. Every hero has their weaknesses. But the major downside to Brightwing is that Brightwing is a healer that doesn't have a lot of single target healing. Brightwing has mostly AoE healing. And this is a downside to like Lucio as well. And so if the enemies are all focusing on killing your tank and you're Brightwing and you don't use your Z to heal your tank, then your tank will eventually take too much damage and have to back out of the fight. If your tank backs out of the fight, then the rest of your team generally feels too scared to go into the fight and you might lose an objective if you would have just used, um, that you otherwise would have won or at least held longer if you would have used phase shift to heal your tank. That's the biggest thing now the second part of this mistake is that people aren't using their z enough to heal when you start moving up higher in rank people start dishing out more damage and they do it safer but your team's also going to be taking a lot more damage as well so if you're not using this off cooldown you're usually going to fall behind other healers 
Brightwing has to be balanced around the fact that every 40 seconds, she can give 25% of max health. And if you're not using this every 40 seconds, and the fight is constant, then you're not going to be using Brightwing to her full potential. And so that's one of the things. I'm not telling you to use it every 40 seconds that they're missing 5% health, but every time that you have someone on your team that's missing about 30% health and you can't just heal them back up naturally, you might want to use a quick phase shift to get them topped off so that the fight, so that you can continue applying pressure where you need to apply pressure. And so that's the huge piece of this. Now the final like mistake and a half is a little bit more difficult to explain, but Brightwing, just because Brightwing has a global I don't think Brightwing is the best global, and in fact, I think Brightwing is one of the worst global heroes in the game. Um, Brightwing cannot apply a ton of pressure in lane, where other globals like Dahaka, Falstad, um, Illidan, and uh, even ETC and like his E build can actually apply a lot of pressure. They can wipe the wave relatively quickly, and they can do a lot of single target damage to take out the, the turrets and potentially the forts. Their globals tend to be a little bit more effective because you you can can do a lot of damage and add a lot of value. And then when you join the fight, um, you didn't really lose a lot by not being there that early because they're heroes that don't have a lot of like poke. Well, Brightwing, on the other hand, is someone who is great in a stalemate. Where Illidan is terrible in a stalemate, where Dahaka is terrible in a stalemate, and they get most of their value from that global and not being at the stalemate, so that when the fight actually starts, they can arrive when they're the strongest. Brightwing's the opposite. Brightwing is great in a stalemate. Brightwing has poke. Brightwing has ways to reduce predictable damage. Brightwing has ways to stop dives. Brightwing has ways to potentially heal people back up and heal people back up while those... Um, stalemates are happening or potentially knock people back to prevent the engage brightwing is one of the best healers for stalemate fights so by having brightwing in the global position you basically are doing one major problem you are not getting the full potential out of brightwing and two you're not really getting much done other than maybe soaking one lane and so that's where I said, if you really need, if your team's plan is to really get value out of the global, you need to be double soaking. And if your team's plan is not to get value out of the global, and you're expecting the fight to either stalemate, or you're expecting the fight to just happen soon, it's best to just stay with your team and get passive healing, poking, um, movement speed for potential engages on your terms, polymorphs, and just be there with your team. And then you don't have to use your Z for the mobility. You can use your Z for the heal and have a much higher chance of winning the fights. In fact, most of the fights that I see Brightwings going global, they use their Z to join the team right before the objective. They don't get any bonus healing off of their heal. They just join the, the team fight as the fight's about to happen or when the objective's about to happen. And they lose their biggest heal. They might even get in poor positioning because if they Z the tank, as the fight's going, they're about to Z in the middle of the fight. And if they don't have their 10 available, then they're gonna die from it. So um, I personally don't recommend people doing the global too often on Brightwing because you lose some of Brightwing's best abilities. Now, I say that's a mistake and a half because, or, or, or half a mistake anyways, because Brightwing is still a global and there are still times where you wanna go global. One of the best examples is you're closing in on a talent tier. Let's say you're level nine and the enemies are level nine and you have four people that go to the objective and you have four people that go to the objective. Um, you can be sitting in the opposite lane soaking. The enemy solo laner could be maybe soaking. And what's going to happen is when both of you guys hit 10, you can Z to your team and it'll be a 5v4. Or let's say that their, their team doesn't end up joining. Um, or they send 5 to the objective and you guys send 4. You get 10s right before them, you Z, and then you can use your 10s to take out the enemies. But in both of those scenarios, there's a good chance that you're losing the value of your Z or you're going to be putting yourself at a greater risk when you do Z in because the tank will be most likely the best target to Z into. Um, and so again, you need to definitely play Brightwing enough to where you can make those decisions for yourself when it is better to use that global or when it's better to just join your team and have the ability to heal much more than if you would have used it for a global. It's definitely not something that you'll learn very quickly because it is kind of one of those things where 
it's really hard to tell which you're going to get more value out of outside of watching the replays later and kind of adding up the amount of heals you missed by not being there and adding up the risks that you have and then the values that you would have gained from going global. Um, that's something that I've kind of figured out on my own. And I would say in about 80% of cases where people go global with Brightwing, it turns out worse than if they would have just stayed with their team. About 20% is the opposite where they just would have been much more effective if they would have went global for those particular talent tier um, spikes that, that you might be trying to go for. So those are the four to five mistakes that people commonly make on Brightwing. Now let's talk a little bit about the build that I recommend and I'm going to tell you guys why I like this build. So I like two builds on Brightwing, but I'm just gonna give you the one. Hypershift into Unstable Anomaly, into Peekaboo, into Blink Heal or Emerald Wind. I actually go Emerald Wind a lot because I like to kind of jump in on my tank, Emerald Wind, and try to push someone into my team. So I like to try to Z only when my tank's in there. Then I knock the enemies far away, I knock one enemy into my team, we kill that enemy, and it allows me to be a little bit more of a playmaker on Brightwing rather than being someone who is just a heal bot. Now, it's less consistent. If your tank never gets in a good position for that, it's pretty bad and blink heal is almost always better but if they don't have a lot of poke where you might need the blink heal um and you don't know if you're going to get to level 20 i really do think that there are times where emerald wind is good especially if they have like a dive assassin because it's great to push away the dive assassin for peel or it's great to jump with your tank and then the dive assassin gets pushed into your team where all the rest of the enemies get pushed away your team can finish off the dive assassin and you can go from there so i personally like emerald wind I almost always go Pixie Power. Getting that extra 25 spell armor is huge. It bumps up the resistances to 55, and it also lowers the cooldown of Pixie Dust so you can move around the map faster, or you can give movement seed to your team more often. Level 16, I generally take Critter Eyes. Critter Eyes makes it to where you do more damage to the target that gets polymorphed, because I take Unstable Anomaly, I will usually slow them a little bit more, my team's going to focus on them a little bit more, and they'll take more damage from there. And finally, level 20, I almost never take intensive wins. I think the lower cooldown is pretty neat, and I like that they reduce the mana cost of it, but I actually like Fairy Protector. I know that sounds kind of weird, but you can activate it to apply Pixie Dust to all nearby heroes. Um, Pixie Dust always bounces back and applies to Brightwing. So um, you can throw your E on an ally and then it bounces back to you. When you're giving 55 spell armor to people, Fairy Protector becomes one of those talents that's really strong about stopping any wombo combos from killing your team. If you've ever seen the Leoric reduce everyone's damage on the opposing team by 50% and it's the, the thing that turns the tide of battle, now imagine that being a single talent on Brightwing and you can activate this to give your entire team 55% spell armor. And also, you also give your team 20% movement speed. So I actually really like this talent as kind of a mini bloodlust as well as an ability to give everyone survivability. Like just, it, it's kind of a mix between like a bloodlust for the movement speed aspect, or like a Lucio, you, you give your, your whole team movement speed, you're basically a Lucio. Um, and there's also one other aspect, if you have one person on your team that you're just really trying to keep alive, you can throw your E on them, then you can throw your Fairy Protector, and then you can throw another E on them because of the cooldown reduction of the talents that we took. So let's say that one person's getting focused. So you have like a Butcher that you're like, I don't know why he played Butcher, but if we can keep him alive, he'll eventually kill everyone on the enemy team. So you might give a movement speed and spell armor, and then as this is about to time out, you might activate this and give it to him again, and then as this one's about to time out, guess what? We have it again. And so you can actually give 55 spell armor for a, quite a while. I mean, almost 10 full seconds of it. Um, and that's also movement speed that you're giving it to him for that long as well. So it can be an amazing tool to keep one person alive, or it can be an amazing tool to give your entire team a movement speed boost um, on a hero and, and spell armor on a hero that normally doesn't have those things. So that's why I like this particular build is because it feels like I'm a huge playmaker where I jump into the tank, I emerald wind everyone away, I get back to my team. If the enemy team finally arrives, we've already killed someone. And then I give everyone spell armor, movement speed, and we run down the enemy team and we take them out. And so I feel more like a playmaker in this build, but there is also the more consistent build where you take blink heal, you take invisible friends, 
and it tends to be more of the meta build. You can adapt the dream shot on the maps that I recommended, and if you do, I also recommend taking Hush. The reason why is because you're going to be throwing out many more cues, and Hush synergizes really well by reducing enemy damage and potentially silencing. It's also really good if you're ever trying to interrupt something because you get that extra range and now you can silence people for one second. So those are the builds that I recommend on Brightwing, and those are the mistakes that uh, I commonly see people make on Brightwing. Thank you guys so much for watching, and feel free to check out my other videos.